Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another podcast. Insecure Review, Ghost Like, with Rom Wills and Miss Mocha Angel. Hi everybody. Hey, hey, you know what? What? Yeah, this is this was actually a good episode. Yes, this it was. It had a lot going on. I mean, it started off with Issa mm-hmm. going around to different businesses, you know, trying to find sponsorship for her festival. Mm-hmm. Now, let's see. She was confused for a vagrant. <laughs> that that was interesting. One woman said she ain't, you know, she ain't giving you any money. Mm-mm. And then one dude, there's going to be bitches there. <laughs> One, <laughs> yeah, dude wasn't amused, but but you know what? She asked the guy at her at her building. She said, "Hey, you can come, even even a dog you don't have." Mm-hmm. And you know, Trina wanted to come. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man, and you know what? And you know, of course, she got discouraged. She got discouraged. She told Molly she didn't want to do the party anymore. Mm-hmm. And then you know, Molly, of course was complaining about her job and you know they had this place to eat and you know i noticed it's a constant theme with Issa and eating <laughs> i actually wrote that down too yeah that that's a constant theme with her so what, what did you say what did you say well my first thing that i saw i just realized it's about the show after three seasons but a this is a love letter to inglewood or to the parts of los angeles that are partly or mostly black um so that to me los angeles is one of the characters Mm, seriously okay. so oh, I, that's deep. I yeah i mean it is man that's deep it is um and by the way Issa's birthday was that saturday that was a big deal and that's mm. the big part of the whole episode um so what i was gonna say was yeah she got discouraged um because it's a lot of work and she's trying to put this festival on all by herself mm-hmm. which is a really bad idea um but she does get some help near the end and mm. that was a whole interesting thing <laughs> yeah that that shoot they setting it up for next year <laughs> yeah they are I'm like, uh oh, mm. did that it, shit? It's about to become days of our lives. Hello, in blackface. Yeah, you know, bays of our lives. Oh my god. Hey, you know, I hate that to was do funny. It. Oh, thanks. Okay, but uh, then we get the next scene. Lawrence meets a guy, and it's his father. <laughs> it's his father, Harry Lennox. Once a, well, you know what? Harry Lennox actually gets work. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he was he was Bless the general him. in the Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's a black man who is the man. Mm-hmm. Like him and him and Joe Morton. Oh they, yeah, they, oh yeah, oh yeah. They fathers, and mm-hmm. they can look at some white guy and say, "You are a boy." Yes, yes. <laughs> you can see Harry true. Lennox doing that same thing, just with a rougher voice. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Right. But I love that scene. That was probably one of my favorite scenes in the whole series. Mm-hmm. Like going back to the first episode. One, we get to see where Lawrence came from. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because just some of the dialogue, he was talking about his parents. Mm-hmm. Well, you get the feeling that, you know, mom, mom ain't like a pushover. Right. <laughs> you know, that's one thing because he was like, you know, he had to get an upgrade. The father, Marcus, had to upgrade his phone. Mm-hmm. And she was like, it, uh, Marcus was like, you know, I, I'll just pick my battles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then Lawrence, I mean, he idolizes his parents' relationship just like Molly did. Yes. And it's interesting what the line he said, because I, 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 I rewound this and kept listening to it. I was because he was talking. Lawrence was talking to his father. He said, yeah, y'all met. Y'all fell in love and got married. It was easy because he was talking about all the problems he was having with different women. Mm-hmm. And his dad looked at him and think, you think Sylvia is easy? <laughs> and then he said, Lawrence said, I want to meet a woman without baggage. <laughs> his father kind of looked at him. He said, your mama and me had matching luggage. Mm hmm. And then we put in work. Mm-hmm. You kids don't want to work. Mm-hmm. Then there was your line. Yes, my line was, Dad said, make your own happy ending. Exactly. And I thought that was a powerful thing because, I mean, one, you get to see Lawrence's background. Mm-hmm. You get to see why, you know, he, 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 he ain't built to be a player. No. If you could see it, because if his parents, if that was the imprint, the model we had, a father and mother who stayed together, who seemingly had a perfect relationship or perfect enough, even though his father was looking at Lawrence like, no, like Negro, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you can understand now where Lawrence, he would be uncomfortable being player player. Right. You know, this is what he's come from. Now, who, who could play his mom? 
No, I, I, think, didn't, I don't know. Who do you I think, think Loretta Devine could play his mom. Oh, God. <laughs> Like, okay. she couldn't play Issa's mom because it wouldn't make sense. Loretta <laughs> Devine looked like that type, you know, be cool, but wouldn't put up with no crap. And me giving her husband, like, time and time enough. Actually, no, nah, not Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis seemed like that type be, like, a divorced parent. Yeah. Yeah, or a single mom or something. But Loretta Devine seemed like that type, you know, she'd be a mom, but she, she'd be a mom. Like, call him on some stuff or probably say, you know, you shouldn't have messed with that Issa girl anyway. Something like that. <laughs> So what happened after that? Well, I got something to say about that whole thing. Oh, you got more go. go well, I, I wouldn't, so I agree with you. As soon as he said, oh, you and mom had a perfect marriage. I said, oh, he, he thinks just like Molly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's identical. They think that their parents' marriage was so perfect. And nobody's marriage is perfect. Mm -hmm. But what they, it, seem, seeming, it seems that the parents maybe kept their stuff from the kids. Mm -hmm. like the, So that their kids didn't see them argue yeah. or, oh, okay. you know, and stuff like that. So now they have these children, these grown children, who are having a lot of difficulty in their relationships because they think it's easy. So Lawrence and Molly both think that marriage and love is easy. And I'm sorry, that's just not the truth. Mm -mm. And I think that is a negative, actually. It's a no. big negative because they, they're idealizing what it should be like. Oh, okay. So that was my but take on I it. Thought it. I thought that was a good relationship. It was a good, actually good casting too because yeah, they actually was. look alike. Yeah. You know, you, you feel it and it was a good vibe and stuff. And it was just like, wow, he probably had fun doing that role. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And I like that they kind of introduced it because you wanted to get a sense of where did Lawrence come from? Yes. Because you get a feeling he's not, he's not really ghetto. No, he, he, he ain't about that life. He seemed like he came from a more privileged background and you can kind of see it. Cause I think his uh, father was military. I think, I think that's they what were they on a say. military base. So it was probably I like, think. yeah. So, you know, he's probably more cosmopolitan anyway, but what happens next? Molly. Oh Let's yeah. Let's talk Molly. Yeah. Molly. So what happened was earlier when she was talking to Issa, um, Molly said she was disappointed at work. And Issa was like, you were shady to Torian. And Molly was like, no, I wasn't. You know, I was just at the right place at the right time for me to step up and show him what I'm all about. And Issa was like, no, you weren't. You were shady. <laughs> and she was shady. And so guess what happens next? So Molly and Torian are assigned as co-counsel to a new client, Ro. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my man Torian says... Oh, you know, Molly will be fine with this because she's very aggressive. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, it's like that. Oh, man. It's ugly. Yeah, and that's that's the interesting thing. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we get an interlude with Issa interviewing with the Beat crew. Right, that was good. Happy yeah. to see that. Congratulations. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm. But then we have an interesting scene because mm. Nathan comes back into it. Molly goes to pick up Issa for a birthday, and we see Nathan. What? And you know what? Molly get out there and shows her more ghetto side. Mm -hmm. She ripped off them sunglasses and was like, excuse me, what are you doing here right now? Mm -hmm. Where have you been? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She was defending her girl. It's been a month. No calls, no texts. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. And he had really nothing to say. Yeah, he, he just walked away. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't come out looking good. No. He's talking about, well, well, we'll get into that yeah. later, right? But basically, she was cock blocking for her girl because it's Issa's birthday. Exactly. And she was like, I don't want no drama for my girl. Goodbye. I know. I know. And then Molly, he takes Issa to this uh, cemetery. <laughs> and it's like one of those outdoor movie things where mm -hmm. they showing The Last Dragon. And it's funny, in line, it's like, once again, a food joke. That must be like an inside joke. Like, Issa oh, Rae, yeah. the person, must eat like crazy. Because you always see it like, is she in line? She said, is there food at the end of this line? Right, and that's like, that was like an avatar. We talking about Avatar The Last Airbender, by the way. Um, remember, they used to go, mm-mm. <laughs> you know, it was like it was like an inside thing. I think the food thing is an inside thing here on Insecure too. Yeah, because she's always like, even when her and uh, well, we'll get to that scene where <laughs> they're at Issa's place because it's still food. She's more food. She, yeah, she she got some Doritos on that thing. I, I hope she getting paid for that product placement. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you didn't say what movie they were going to see. Oh, The Last Dragon. Yes, yes, clapping again. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And there was something with that, you know, looking within and all of that. Oh. And then, you know, okay. Lawrence is there. Hmm. Lawrence is there and, you know, Lawrence and Issa, <laughs> on, 
I, regardless, of, you can see there's a level that they belong together, mm-hmm. but there's a level I think they just add different vibrations. If they can get on the same vibration, they can be together because they up there repeating each other's lines from right. the Last Dragon, and right. it, it, you know Molly looking at them like mm-hmm. y'all too nerds. <laughs> but you know they happy about it, you know, yeah. and that's cool. That 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 that's cool. You can see you can see the click there. Yes. I mean, I'd say the biggest issue between them is just getting over how they're not, they weren't, they weren't together anyway. Right. You know, and that's in real life though. In real life, sometimes you got to feel like, yeah, you clicking on one level, but something else, but can that one other thing either be forgiven or Mm -hmm. can you grow beyond it? Mm -hmm. So, you know what? And I I, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you uh, just real quick. That was directed by Regina King. That was, that was a good episode to watch. I would say, well, I'll comment on the whole season after this. Okay. But, um, you know, we, they go over there, they walk over to Kelly. She got a blanket. You know, she's ratchet as hell. (laughs) Damn, she is ratchet. She is ratchet. And, you know, found out she was made the godmother of Tiffany's baby. Right. Talking about if she wanted a baby, she'd have kept the last one. Okay, stop. And, you pause, know, I'm just like pause, pause. F? I, I had to just, I had, I had to lift, hit, hit the pause button. I was okay. like, what? And I was like, is she joking about having an abortion? That's how I took it. Mm. And I was like, er. Because yeah, <laughs> I'm like, that's not a joke. So, that's not was, a joke. She, yeah, and she was just so casual about it. Yeah. That's what it was. I was just like, yeah, dang, she's ratchet. And then she cursing out people there. Oh, wait, he's cute. Let me walk over to him. Hey, baby. <laughs> you know, Mm-mm. tacky as hell. Is bad at the. Who was I, I forgot that other guy's name from the Molly from the, uh, you know, Coachella thing. Coachella thing. Uh, oh, Julian. Yeah, she's talking see, about Julian. Yeah, because he wouldn't go down. Yeah, on she him. broke up with him for that reason. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like, damn, you nasty. So. <laughs> yeah, and I'll that be- never going down, but she just like God. How's it? How are you a professional? Yeah, she just goes from man to man. It's it's kind of trifling. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But then, um, you know, we after Lawrence talked to Issa, they mm-hmm. did their little scene. Mm-hmm. She's you know, feeling him. Yeah, oh, yeah. Lawrence meets Derek. And I, I found out the guy's name is Fast Mike. Sometimes. Chad. You know about Chad? Yeah, oh, yeah, Chad. I've got Derek. <laughs> Chad and Fast Mike. <laughs> Thanks. I wrote down Derek, too. <laughs> no. It's Chad. Chad. Chad back with his ex. He said, mm. she had to do a lot to get with him. But see, but that goes back to what his dad was, Lawrence's dad was saying. Mm-hmm. That was his whole point. Mm-hmm. And no, no, I don't necessarily agree with Chad getting back with his ex. But I'm saying his dad was making a point that it's not always easy. Sometimes it's messy. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people break up. Sometimes they get back together. Sometimes they break up again. I mean, it's not. Uh, relationships are not linear is what his dad his whole his dad's point yeah and i thought that was an important thing yeah and you know they back together and chad holding the purse you know he had to do oh, some stuff my God. he had to do some stuff and then he looked at he gave lawrence that look mm-hmm. like Nigga. so you knew <laughs> i was like uh-oh she did some work too to get back yeah she did hey, hey, hey that shit ladies y'all know when y'all want them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all we do. Know. <laughs> y'all know what y'all do. It's true. That, that's why y'all be like sitting back. Y'all be saying, I can't dance like. Yeah, so let's move on back to Jared. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Remind him who Jared is. Well, Jared, you got to go back to the first season. Mm-hmm. Now, that was a guy that Molly was feeling, even though he, mm-hmm. you know, he had a menial job compared to hers. Right. But found out he had a, a DL incident. Well, can you call it that? Well, he had a gay homosexual. He had an incident. incident. He had yeah. experience. He yeah, did. Yeah, he had a, but he was honest with her about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, she didn't want to deal with him after that. Right. Even though he was probably stroking her more than Joe was. Yes. Big Value, I'll be sure, who hopefully we've seen the last of. Please, anyway, God. Anyway, she ran into him, and, you know, they talking, but then this other brother walk up. Right. And, you know, Molly was like, oh, that must be his boyfriend. Yes. Oh, and that, that messed up. And then she runs in. It's interesting. She runs into Lawrence, right? She runs into Lawrence, and it's interesting what he says. He, he asked her if she saw a ghost. <laughs> 
And that's kind of what she, that's kind of what happened. That is what happened because number one, okay, yeah, she thought he was gay. I'm trying to be his brother too. Remember, as Ram just said, he had a menial job, quote unquote, as compared to hers when they were together. But now he's regional manager at Enterprise now. Yeah. You know? And then, guess what it turns out? Like he's not gay. Mm -hmm. He's dating somebody who kind of looks like Molly. Mm -hmm. Apparently he likes chocolate. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. And Molly didn't know what to say other than, um, 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 I see mm -hmm. the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> That's all she had to say. Yeah. It's pretty awkward. It, it was awkward, but it, I think it made her think about some things, yes, too. Yes, it did. It made her think about some things with that. Mm -hmm. And even before that, we mm -hmm. saw that that whole Last Dragon thing was hosted by the woman who was at Tiffany's Baby Shop. Oh, yes. Now, this is one sincere criticism I have. Mm -hmm. They didn't say call her name in the episode. At all. And I would I would fault the writers. The, writer, the writing is great on the show. But from a writer's perspective, mm -hmm. that wasn't a good thing because I had to go back to the other show that she was introduced in. I had to listen to it because her name's Condola, but I thought it was Condola. I was, I was like listening and mm -hmm. I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. And I thought about that because I even went through the show, her scenes again. I was like, yep. they didn't call her name. Yep, I did that too. I had to rewind. I was like, what's this child's name? Never heard it. I didn't go back to the last the baby shower episode like you mm -hmm. did. Yeah. But I was I wrote that down too. I'm like, what's this woman's name? Yeah, that was that was really bad writing. I gotta give a criticism, and this is just a technical criticism in an episode like that, call the name. Mm -hmm. Cause they kind of did that in a way with that church girl. Call her name. I mean, you knew what her name was because you saw it in the text. Mm -hmm. But just call her name. I mean, and that's a technical thing. Hopefully mm -hmm. somebody pointed that out to them mm -hmm. once they made the episode. There's like we have no idea, and as we're gonna see later this mm -hmm. is going to be a major character right she's important yeah very important character yeah. in more ways than one mm -hmm. right so you know when we get out of that and on the way out Issa connects with the condola uh, what condola condola yeah. yeah Issa connects with condola on the way out because you know mm -hmm. You know, they started, they kind of vibe over that she was able to put that together and right. everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it still leads to more. We'll get to that. Right. But we, then we see Issa and Molly at Issa's place. <laughs> you know, Issa decides she's going to go for the block party again. Of course, she's on her bed, like eating some uh, Doritos. Mm, right. Now, when she has a mouse up in her bed, because that place <laughs> she lives in doesn't look like it could keep out a mouse. <laughs> She's going to be highly upset because mm -hmm. mice don't care. They'll get in the bed with her. Yeah. You know, and eat. But that's a, I, like I say, that, I think that's an inside joke because she always has food at like every place, you know, always eating something, right? And then, you know, Issa gets mad when she finds out Molly sent Nathan away. Yeah, they got into a big fight. Yeah, that that was deep. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that? Fight? I thought it was perfect. It makes per perfect sense. And Issa's quote was, "Do you want to be partner with everybody hating you?" Mm -hmm. And yeah, pretty much that's the track that Molly's on. Mm -hmm. And I, I I was feeling the fight, and so that led into the next scene, and or the next day, I mean the, the next scene, but the next day. Um, when Molly approaches Torian to say, Hey, you know, I'll do this for the client. You do this for the client. He was like, yeah, I'm off of the, I'm off. I'm not doing that with you. I'm going to go um, work on this other case with the two other ladies. Mm -hmm. And the look on her face when she stood there watching the three of them in the office, mm -hmm. you know, Issa's words struck her. It's like, everybody hates her. Mm -hmm. Her peers hate her. Yeah. They, okay. She didn't click. She's not playing good office politics. Correct. You know, and I think that's an important that's an important thing because it's just like they kind of looked at her. She's sitting there looking at mm -hmm. him, and they kind of looked at her they, like, and? yeah, are you leaving, bitch? Come right, on, right, right, you know? right, 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 right. We ain't feeling you. I mean, and really, if you know about like any office politics, mm -hmm. she probably she she's gonna have to really rehabilitate herself to make partner at that firm. That's what she wants to do. Right. But. It's always politics. Trust me. Always. Anybody, any professionals listening to this, mm -hmm. you work in any type of firm, shoot, anywhere, a retail store, you know it's politics. Yes. And she's not made, they'll, I mean, they'll use her where they can, but when it comes time to move her up, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, mm, mm. they'll find something. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, getting getting out of that, we get back to Issa meeting Condella. Am I saying her? I keep calling her name Condola. It's Condola. Condola. 
See, that's why they should have called her name loudly. Not some minor character, because when they introduced her in the episode, you didn't think anything. She was just another woman there. They called a few names. Because I was like, I'm looking at the characters. Is it Blair? No, she's pregnant. And, you know, is it Ashley? No, I don't look like it. Oh, it's that character because her hair was different. Mm -hmm. It's the importance of it, right? Okay. So they had a coffee shop and, you know, Mm -hmm. Condola is going to help her with her thing. Yes. And that's the important thing. And they laughing and they vibing. Yep, yep. But we, we, it's going to mm, be a curveball thrown in this. Yeah. You know? So Issa goes home. She sees the flowers and everything. Mm-hmm. That's cool from Nathan. Okay, that's cool. And then Molly, she calls Andrew to apologize. Yes. Thank you, now, Lord. For all y'all sisters out there, <laughs> or even anybody who mm-hmm. like Korean or Asian men, mm-hmm. that dude was sitting on the couch... <laughs> Like, didn't he? Did he have a wife beater on? Maybe I don't know. Um, it was a white shirt. I don't know if it was a wife beater. Whatever the case, he right. had his hair all out and right. everything. Mm-hmm. I was just like, mm-hmm. uh, okay, <laughs> that's some subliminal stuff. I was like, okay, and dude still chill. She called him up, and dude yep. like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what is it, Molly? I got shit to do while he playing video games. <laughs> and just saying. Mm-hmm. You know, and she she apologized. Yeah, he was moved. You could tell he was moved by it. Yeah. So, yeah. what a ha- what happens next is interesting because if they to hook up, right? Mm-hmm. Nathan still live with him. Yes. Oh yeah. You know, that's true. Nathan still lives with him, so that would make a shall we say awkward situation, mm-hmm. right? But then the next scene, that's when you really th- see things going to be real interesting next season. Mm. Condola meets Lawrence at the restaurant. Yes, they are on a date. Yeah, and you could tell by the vibe, Lawrence ain't trying to go for the poom poom right away. Right, correct. You know, give a nice little kiss on the cheek. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's like, "Is it? You know, it's okay. I'm divorced." And dude, right, the dude's like, and she well, he kind of lied. Come on. Yeah, well, that he it could have been her that he was thinking about when he talked to his father. Oh, that's true. But okay. see, they didn't really set one thing. They didn't really set Condola up good i don't think they really didn't yeah because i don't re- even remember her from the party yeah, i had to go back like and watch nothing. it i mean i actually thought something when her and lawrence were talking at the party i said oh she probably that's probably another one you're going to get okay but you know whatever the case so this is going to make things interesting especially if her and lawrence get serious but then she she working with these she's oh god awkward yeah, that's going to be crazy. But then Nathan comes back. Mm. And Nisa, t- I'm gonna, how, as a woman, did you feel about that scene? <sighs> okay, I was thinking about this on the way over here. Um, first of all, that was lame. He didn't give her a real explanation about why he ghosted. It was just lame. It was like, oh, I have stuff to do in Houston. Okay, well, then tell her that. Mm-hmm. How hard is that to say? I'm back in Houston. I got some business to take care of. I'll talk to you when I talk to you. Mm. Come That's on, not, ain't nothing wrong with his fingers. Yeah, it were, because Houston, you know, is over in Houston. <laughs> no. L.A. is over in L.A. And <laughs> since, you know, he probably using a prepaid or, or whatever. No, wait, he's oh, on wait. Instagram, so he ain't using a prepaid. I'm trying to help the brother out. No, you're not, because you about to go, you know, the way my check and the savings is set up. <laughs> Okay, but you know, I'm just saying though. I'm just saying whatever. But it was, it was, it, and you know, it, he was, he was different because he was always cool and calm, but mm-hmm. he was almost like nervous and stuff. And it's still, mm. it was still a weak explanation. Very, you know, it's a very because I was just like he all know where I had trouble and all that. It's like, and it's like, damn, nigga, just call him. <laughs> and if you yeah. don't want to talk to her, text her. Yeah, just text her, be Say like, something. hey, I've got to go to Houston or something like that. That's all he had to do. Right. That's 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 it. That's this week. As as a man and I y'all, you know, y'all come on here, try to get game from Uncle Ron. Just let the woman know. Say something. Yeah, just just say something. I mean, especially y'all done been intimate or something. Just say, you know, you know what, I got some stuff in Houston. Um, I'll just get back with you. Thank you. You know? It just let her know. And then y'all could have been talking all the time. Exactly. You know exactly. You guys be talking all the time. Nah, that dude just ghosted. So yeah. it was just like I don't know what's going on with that. But then we get to East in her apartment, mm-hmm. and this was actually a very good scene. She turned on her music and finally fixed that joint up. 
That was a, and I think the music was uh, something like oh. getting the glow or something oh, like that. God. I didn't write that down, but I loved it. I just wrote yes to playing her records. Yes. Yeah, she played her stuff. Yeah. And she uh, fixed the apartment, and, like really straightened it up. She unpacked. She made it at home and she was at peace. It was like, it was no drama. Thank you, Lord. No anything. Thank so, you. So, mm. you know what? I was going to say this as a, f- a final thing. Mm. You could have threw out the first four episodes of the season. <laughs> you really could have. You could have thrown out the <clears throat> first four. Because it was just like, eh. Yeah. It was, eh. Because what, what was it? What was, uh, what was what? like... No, what, what high episode? like or high did not like high like. Yeah, but that's kind of that's almost where no, it was the episode before that that got it interesting. I can't even remember what it was. Okay, well while you remember that, let me. Can I say some stuff? Oh, go for it. Go for it. So before I get to the good stuff, I just want I had to I wanted to ask you. So remember before the season started, remember they said they were talking about toxic masculinity. Oh yeah, I was gonna go in if they did. Okay. Um, maybe we all have different definitions of what toxic is, Mm -hmm. but I didn't feel like the brothers were toxic. Not even Nathan. No. I don't like them, but I'm like, if that's toxic, we, we, we talking about two different definitions. I didn't see anything toxic, if anything. And that's the interesting thing. What, like Nathan, he, he was just on some weak shit. It was just weak. Right. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel was, Daniel was actually trying to get with her. He was trying to, probably trying to be in a relationship with her. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's okay, up for well, no, okay. no. That's up for argument. That is up for discussion because the way he connects with women is sexually, mm-hmm. you know. So and um and Lawrence, okay, you know he's trying his best. Um, mm-hmm. women throwing it at him, he taking it, shocker. Um, but that's not really what he wants. Yeah, you know, Chad. Okay, he cheated and he admitted it and he worked his way back to his woman. Mm-hmm. And we had a couple other, you know, random brothers here and there. But that those are not my definition of toxic men. No, they they weren't toxic. They were just regular guys, really Thank making you. mistakes. Thank you. Even Nathan, Nathan, know he messed up. Yes. And so you know, oh, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of them, they were just regular guys. I mean, it was regular. You, it, anytime you would call it toxic, I mean, damn, what y'all looking for, perfect? They I, weren't perfect men, do you know? And that's the thing. They were regular guys. They Like Lawrence, because I know at least uh, some people might thought, well, he was skanky dealing with all these women. But he realized his mistake. What he, he well, say? he got and chlamydia, he was, too. <laughs> yeah, well, so, whatever the case, Yeah. he, he said, look, I got to change this up. Yes. You know, I mean, he went to his father for relationship advice. Yes. So what's toxic about that? A man going to an older man for advice, you know? I mean, you can't, I can, you can't really say anything in there mm-hmm. was, you can't, you can't point to any instance and say, this is toxic masculinity. Yes, I agree. Because I guess my definition of toxic, toxic is somebody who's abusive. Yeah. Whether it be verbally, mentally, sexually, emotionally, spiritually abusive. Mm-hmm. That's toxic to me. Okay. And that's not what I saw. I just saw regular dudes struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Regular so. they were regular dudes. They made their mistakes, made their amends, suffered their consequences. Correct. It was like boom, you know? Yeah. So okay. I mean I didn't really see it, but you know what? Um like I said, the final four episodes, okay. Yes. Got I'm real interesting you. and I cannot remember the title of it, but and that's I, that's the feeling I got. And then especially when they brought Lawrence back. Thank in. God of mercy. Thank you. Because the thing with Lawrence, I think, because a big issue with all the women on there is the men. So you can't have mm-hmm. their growth without mm-hmm. juxtaposition. Okay, I'm going to trip over that word. Do the word <laughs> a for A juxtaposition. Me. Thank you. Thank you. English Thank- major. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, there's always a word I trip over. You can't do that without showing them respond to the men. Like, yes. uh, Issa's growth came through the men. Yes. He, uh, Molly's growth yes. came through the men. And Issa too. Yeah. You know? And so... And Lawrence's growth came through the women. Yeah. So you really... And all the all the growth in, in real life, and I've talked about this on like my Deep Thought channel, mm-hmm. and when you get into relationships, they mm-hmm. are meant for us to grow. Yes. So, you know, at first not having them on there, it was just like, eh. Now, one, well, another criticism I would have of the season, okay. they just dropped Daniel too easily. Yes, I agree with that. I didn't like how they dropped him, especially if you're going to drop him like that, don't introduce his family because then you're thinking, okay, we're going to find out more about him. Yes. You know, whether you liked him, disliked him, big fan, Daniel Hive, whatever they say, 
you know, don't tease us thinking, oh, okay, we're going to see his sister in there, little girl. So all of a sudden you think, oh, okay, mm-hmm. there's more to him. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, it's time to get rid of Daniel. It's like, hold up. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah. I do have that criticism of it. Um other than that, I, I can say, because the thing about the show, it does represent contemporary relationships. Yes. Every character represents, well, most of the characters, well, yeah, even Andrew, you know, <laughs> just imagine he a brother. He's you know? a brother, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even him, because you got some stoic brothers like that who just cool and calm like that looking at. I just wish they actually had a brother like that, like that just thorough brother. Yes. I wish yes. they did, that thorough yes. brother one day who's looking at all of them like, you're crazy. Yeah, like crazy. You know? I mean, you could. Derek could have been that brother, but he he's almost like you kind of wonder about him and Tiffany. <laughs> you know, I, I still think that babe they she, <laughs> they get ratchet next year mm-hmm. and stuff next season. That baby gonna come out looking like somebody else. Okay. So. Hey, I keep pushing that donut. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so can I say a couple things? You got it all, huh? Okay, so for the most part, Miss Mocha Angel is happy right now. Because I said in the very first episode, I said, I need to see some growth from these people. God bless them. I saw it. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just, a couple things I just want to say real quick about that episode, the highlight, the highlight episode, Mm -hmm. the Coachella episode. Mm -hmm. I didn't say this at the time, but I was not feeling the scene where they took the drugs from Andrew and Nathan and um, Julian. Mm -hmm. I was not happy. I'm like, y'all some grown ass women. Okay, y'all professionals, in quotations, taking drugs for a minute you do not know. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is not okay. Mm-hmm. Period. And I was, I just was not feeling that scene. However, fast forward to the, to the last episode, Issa, thank God, she quit her job. She interviewed at the job that she really wanted. She let go of Nathan, hopefully. She's happy in her own space. She's supporting herself. She's actually friends with her ex. She's still feeling them, but they're friends. Okay, and she actually said in that last episode, I'm trying to make better decisions. I'm trying to make the right decision. Thank you. That's growth. Molly, I saw one piece of growth in Molly the whole season. And that was when she apologized to Andrew. Mm -hmm. Okay, she trying. Okay. And then Lawrence, um, when he he's taking a chance on Condola, it's Condola, by the way. (laughs) And she's willing he's willing to work. Apparently, he's willing to work on another relationship and drop those in- incredibly high expectations that he has. Mm. Because for him to say, I want a woman without baggage, I'm like, well, you got baggage. Mm-hmm. You know, he may not think he does, but he does. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really happy to see all of that in this episode. So, Okay. That was all my right. take on it. That was my take. I, I like the growth and everything, and that's it. I mean... I want to thank Miss Mocha Angel for coming on because I already told you I didn't want to do anything. So, and, <laughs> I, I, no, no, he didn't. But <laughs> I was just like, I, I don't want to do it. I'll do something if there's a, if they really did some on toxic masculinity and I was going to jump in on it mm-hmm. if it wasn't handled right. But mm-hmm. you know, like Miss Mocha Angel said, we didn't really see anything. <laughs> I saw normal behavior. Yeah, it was totally normal. If any, and if there's anybody who thought there was some toxic in there, whether male or female. It's something wrong with you. It was normal. Baggage. People have baggage Thank you. issues. Child. Every 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 single person. If you can't walk on water, mm-hmm. you got issues. Right. Seriously, you better raise the dead. If you if you if somebody say, "Well, I don't have any issues. Everything yeah, I got all my stuff," mm-hmm. you're deluded as hell. Right. Everybody <laughs> got some, everybody got this shit with them. Every single per every single person out there mm-hmm. got some. I, Uncle Rom did. I would tell you straight up, mm-hmm. I'm a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I know I'm a work in progress. Yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so I'm a work. <laughs> you know, some detractors might say, "No, Rom, you're just a piece of work." <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah I might say that too. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody uh, for embracing me. I do actually read all the comments, even though I don't comment. I do read what you say. And I really, truly thank you for embracing me and accepting me doing these reviews with Rom. Thank you so much. Thank you. So until we do something else, because, you know, there's this TV show called Atlanta. Yes. Oh, my (laughs) God, which I'm a huge fan of. And Rom's only seen one episode. I'm like, dude. 
Come on. Man, she made me get the subscription so I could see the old episodes. I was like, okay, okay, I, I see it. Yeah, and no, I love that show, by the way. All right, so you might hear us again and, you know, might bring her on to discuss some other stuff. Mm-hmm. We'll work on it, you know. I would um, come back. All right, then. I'm glad to hear it. So anyway, y'all, that's it for now. Peace and many blessings. Goodbye now. Bye.